everyone and welcome back. As you can see, the majority of the snow from last week's snowstorm is disappearing. Today it's supposed to get up to 44 or 46 or something. Yesterday was really windy. I want to stop up at L&M and see what kind of baby chickens they have for sale. And then I have to go to Walmart and I'm going to go to Super One. Good morning everybody. I guess we'll try this again. Yesterday I went in there like you saw to L&M and took pictures of all of those the chickens that they had there and none of them were really the kind that Melissa wanted. She wants to get more colorful eggs. So but anyway when I get there then my camera battery goes dead and then I forgot my wallet, so I had to drive all the way back to the house, get my wallet, grab uh, another battery that was sitting on a shelf just above the dryer, thinking that was a good battery, put it in, and I was in the middle of talking on the first clip like this one, and the battery went dead. <laughs> it was like, okay, I'm done for the day. Anyway, last night we went ahead and ordered uh, some different chicks from McMurray or Murray whatever some place that sells them online that's real popular and they come in they get shipped the April the week of the April 22nd whatever right around that time I think we have seven chickens coming now this morning is Friday and I am going uh, doing a run for work this morning and probably go out to eat with Melissa today and get back to the farmhouse sometime this afternoon it was 18 degrees this morning when I left the house. Felt pretty crisp out there, but not a lot of wind at all. Melted a lot of snow yesterday. Good morning, everybody. Try to get this video going. I got those, uh, the rub for the one made up last night, and the other one is a store-bought rub that we've used many times. And I'm doing two pork roasts. We're not going to eat them today. We'll eat them on Sunday, tomorrow. 
but uh, I need to get them, I need all day to smoke these, so getting them on this morning, it's just about 7 o'clock right now, it's supposed to be 49 degrees, and pretty windy today. Get that up to 225 to 250, and just adjust it so it stays there all day. Starting to hear some of the spring songbirds now. It's pretty dead in the winter. Yesterday after I made my run and went to Melissa's work, then we went out to VIP in Superior and had pizza. I'm pretty sure tomorrow Zachary's going to stop by. It should be raining tomorrow. He needs to pick up that sheetrock lift that he borrowed me. He's got a friend that needs it for a while, so he's going to come and grab it. Decided to come out here and grab a couple pieces of that maple for the smoker. Melissa had bought, well, these I already had out here, these thermometers for in the oven and one for there and one for up here. But she also got this other one that you just put this in the oven and this can sit, well you're not going to put it on top, but wherever. And then it'll tell you the temperature because remember the one on the front of the oven is definitely off. So yeah, she was wondering where these were. We looked everywhere and you know where they were, right where they're supposed to be. We put all of this thermometer stuff on the second shelf in the cabinet that's above the coffee maker. And I looked in there, but I was thinking it would still be in the box, and it wasn't. And I looked out here everywhere thinking I brought it out here uh, a couple different nights. And then last night, I come out here and looked one more time, and then I went in there, and sure enough, it was right there in the cabinet. I should start this stove up. I haven't done that for a while. It's kind of chilly in here. I have the heat turned down so low. We just had a Walmart order delivered and I brought everything in except for the uh, sugar. She got another 50 pounds of sugar delivered in. It's a little too much for me to lift right now. I still have under two weeks now though. almost started this up and was going to cook one of those two roasts in here but then I figured you know there's plenty of room in that smoker and it's going to taste better in the smoker anyway So it just goes straight through. Open that up.
Melissa made breakfast for lunch. Don't know if you can see that. It's been about six hours it's been in. We're running right about one or 250. I've had to put charcoal in there two times and keep adding wood. This afternoon we watched Forbidden Planet in the fish house camper and now it's uh, about quarter after seven. I'm just running up to get lottery tickets because it's at like one point something billion dollars. I got 169 and 171. I did not wrap it this time. I'm just going to let it go. If I can get it up to 190 to 195, it won't fall apart as easy as when it gets up to like 203 and 205. It'll be just perfect. Well, it's been almost 15 hours. I'm at 179 degrees. Did not quite make it up to 190, but... I have to pull these because it's almost bedtime. Look at how much smaller they got. Wrap them in foil, throw them on the, in the barbecue, the gas grill because it's already down to 34 degrees so it should be fine. It's supposed to get down to 32 tonight. Tomorrow I'll pull these out and put them into the roaster and heat them back up again. Triple wrapped and in the outside barbecue here. Leave them in here overnight. Tomorrow morning about 9.30 or so, Zachary and Rose are coming over to get that sheetrock lift. Get these in the uh, roaster and should be a good lunch. Good morning everybody. Bright sunshine earlier this morning. Now the clouds are rolling in. The wind is picking up. By later this afternoon we should have some rain. I was just out here and just picked a few things up so there's a clear trail here for Zach to get that sheetrock lift out of here. They're on their way down right now. They should be here 9.30 or so. I even fired up the cook stove again so I can show them how it works. You want to hold the ladybug now? Okay. You guys to come all the way off? Yes, I know. I This slides right up around. It just sits in there, but this is always the hardest part. Yeah, because it goes down. Like wedges in there. Oh, gosh. Zachary and Rose left. I've had those roasts in the from yesterday that I was smoking in the roaster since 8 o'clock this morning. Just reheating them. I put them in the foil and everything just straight in there. Melissa's in there boiling potatoes for mashed potatoes and we're going to have green beans with that. That it's parts. That brightness of the sauce. Raised pork shoulder instead of a sour orange juice and chilies. We adapted that
good morning everybody as you can see it's raining out today is the day of the eclipse just come up here and filled up my truck with diesel and I had two empty gas cans at the house so I filled those up just running a few errands here and I'll get back to the house they're saying on Wednesday today is Monday Wednesday it's supposed to be 63 degrees they said down by my where my folks live it might be pushing 80 <laughs> I made it back home. It's about a quarter after 11 right now. I think the eclipse here starts at one and then like at two o'clock is when it's gonna be the darkest. I think we have like 65 or 75% coverage here, which we're not gonna see, but it will get darker. 11.40 now, looks like we've got 0.39 inches of rain since midnight. It looks like in southeast Minnesota, it's going to be 80%. So up here, I mean, we're east Minnesota, but we're northeast. Not like the tent, which is really northeast, but... So yeah, we'll probably be 70 or 75% here. And if the world ends like they're saying on TikTok, you'll never see this video. <laughs> 1.40 in the afternoon. 20 minutes till that's going to be at its peak. I don't see any zombies running around. <laughs> Doesn't even seem any darker. Not yet. My daughter Sarah just sent me this picture where she is. It's nice and sunny down there. And where did I say they drove to? Southern Illinois. Just wait and see if it gets any darker here. I can't believe they have a show on TV that's covering this. That's yeah, a quarter after three right now. It's all done. I couldn't really tell. I mean, I can tell now it looks a little bit lighter, but watched it on TV with all the different places where it went total and it was pretty cool, but some of those people crying and everything about it, it's like, come on, people, it's just an eclipse. everybody the rain stopped it's supposed to get up to 58 degrees I think it was today in about an hour the Sun is supposed to peak out and tomorrow 63 so first thing I'm gonna do when I right after surgery I tried to get that battery out of the buggy and I got it out but that was enough work for me at that time <laughs> now I'm gonna bring it up and get a new battery at Walmart get that put in the buggy because tonight or tomorrow Melissa would be able to run that around and run the dogs and then I want to get started on that disc today is five weeks since my surgery uh, tomorrow I have a phone doctor appointment where she'll talk about my restrictions and everything that's at 9 40 tomorrow morning so I want to get started and, and I can start putting like the hoses and stuff on and get ready for that disc so happy we're gonna have nice weather. Got the new battery. It's about $29.97, I think it was, before tax. Sun is coming out. I 
want to put a new bolt and nut on there. That should work just fine. Because the, I had a hard time getting the wrench to stay on it before. the buggy fired back up and even the this piece of trim here last year or the year before Melissa ran into a tree or something and it tore that off as some kind of piece of brush it broke it right here but at least I got it put back on and three screws in it so it won't go anywhere now Just looking at this stuff for the uh, disc, you know I thought that that Joe guy sent me this John Deere operator's manual, but it didn't. It came from, I'm not going to say their name, but somebody in Indiana. And to me this is like gold right now. But I wanted to look because I, before, remember the disc needs, it doesn't have one hose. But I'm pretty sure that when the Joe guy sent me this, these two are for the tractor. They'll go from the tractor. If I put that on, which I am thinking about doing. The only problem is that there's a, um, my light bar is right there. So I'm probably gonna have to loosen that and move it so I can spin something on there. Like this could go in for one, this could go in this is kind of how they have it set up in there now. But how do you screw everything in? I mean you know how it doesn't 
like this, keep spinning so it's easy. Everything else you gotta take and wrap the whole entire hose around and around. So I'm just gonna look at this and figure out what I need. I look at all the stuff and I've got male and female ends. I could, I could just unhook the three point or the loader. I, I posted a question on Farm All whatever on my one of the Facebook things that I follow. And they said I should take that loader off of the tractor for like if I'm plowing or disking or whatever, and I'm sure it would steer a lot easier. But I could just, you know, unhook, because they're just like a quick coupler or whatever you call it, and hook in. But it would also be nice if I had its own separate thing, because the I never take off the three-point. I usually don't take off the loader. So then I would have um, a hydraulic setup that was, no matter what I put back there, if I have a plow back there, I would want a hydraulic lift one. And... Uh, for the disc, it would just click in. I don't have to unclick anything else. So I'm still thinking about that too. Also on that Farmall page, I posted the question last night, like which is in and out? Like when I pull the lever, you know, which is going to the disc and which isn't? And I thought it would be a question that would get a hundred answers and it didn't. And it seems like different people like different things. It doesn't matter which way they go. It's the way you want them. Like for me, when I pull the lever, I want the disc to go up. Just like with the loader. Pull it and it goes up. Some people pull it, they want it to go down. Push it, they want to go up. So that made it even, I mean, easier, but more complicated in my mind because just tell me how it's supposed to be and I'll get used to it. But I can do it whichever way I want. See a different, I have another, I had another disc and it didn't have a wheel lift. And we had them when I was a kid too. But I have this one and Zach and I might go get it because the people that bought the house that I was in for 12 years before the divorce, that disc was an old, just a junky old disc, but it worked. We disc, disc that whole yard and laid sod and and then I just got put back in the woods. And of course, when the divorce came, I didn't have time to take that. I just, I didn't know right from left. So, but that one there, you would, you know, you'd pull a string here. This would go up and then you back it up and then the disc turns so it cuts in more. I don't see that on this one. This one has a, just has some bolts on there. And maybe you don't do that because you're not pulling it, you know, straight. There's no reason to pull it like that unless you don't want to cut up the ground. But one thing I'm getting used to is, like for me, that thing when I was a kid, we just called it a disc. We had a disc, we had a spring tooth, we had a drag. And then we had a big old packer thing for packing, you know, it was just a big steel wheel that I'd pull behind. We had a Minneapolis Moline ZA, I think was the tractor. And I was allowed to drive that since I was 11 years old. And I did a lot of riding on that, but like this now, you know, these are called Harrows. So the true tractor disc hero. So I've got these new words that obviously aren't new. They've been around since a long time. And uh, so when I look online to buy something on Marketplace or whatever, it's hard for me because I don't know what to put in for a search. But this is called a disc hero. And it's disc D-I-S-K. I think when I spell it, I do D-I-S-C. It's just about time for lunch, but these double breakaway clamp, I want to go look at them on the tractor and see what that looks like. I guess they really don't. They have this here, which to me looks like it was bolted to somewhere or was supposed to be. Otherwise, they just come right through here. And see, I could easily just unhook it here and hook up to it for the disc, but then my three-point won't work. And up here you can see how they go in, and then this one, see, is not used. So I can hook it into this one, hook up my new lever, 
I could put them over here too, but I this is where I walk all the time. This is how I get on the tractor. I mean, they've got the little step that was welded on there. They've got one right there. Try to keep it off of this side. I should probably start that today or tomorrow. It's been, as I haven't started it in six, six weeks. I mean, today is five weeks for a surgery, so at least five and a half weeks. I noticed that this thing was, the smoke was coming out slow. And it's been a while since I checked this up here. Eh, doesn't look too bad. A lot of creosote in here now though that it's it's warmer out. And the old woodshed is getting down there. That's another reason why we're getting a lot of creosote though. This was really wet. This wood that's getting burned. This stuff back here is dry, but Get this out of here too. Burn it all up. Only a few more weeks to go until we shut her down. I'm going to go have some lunch. Well, I got these things on the actual tractor. So now I need to get, uh, looks like this is the end that goes on the tractor and the male end goes on all the implements. So I need to put one of these on here. That's just easier to do it here than out there. got this hydraulic liquid gasket stuff or whatever. I don't even know. Yeah, it would need it. Ah, from when I got, did the uh, log splitter. See what my grandpa had and the toolbox I got from him, that looks like an inch. Needs to be a little bit bigger than that. Maybe this one. All right, this will go into that top part I just did. And this will come down to wherever we hook up the implement.
I got one down and one to go. That was the hardest one that I just did. I got the new lever hooked in there, the hose is on, I guess now I start the tractor up and if fluid doesn't come shooting out all over the place, I did that part right. I got everything hooked up and I got the light back at pretty much the same exact place it was. I see one little leak right there, so I'm going to go grab that bigger wrench and try to give that a couple more turns. Only one of the lines must have pressure on it really because when I would run the either forward or backward, this is the only one, I think it was this one that would move. And it's the same way with the loader and everything I was looking at it. So one must just be a return line. I'm not going to hook that one up until I go up to L&M and get a hose made. They might have, all I need is an 8 foot hose, but if they don't have it, they'll have to have them make it and I don't want to have to take this off and bring it up there and say make me one like this. But what I was looking at here, if you look on the disc, there's this thing that sticks up with a loop on it and I thought that that was for, like I've seen it before, like when you have your I don't know what kind of thing it was we would trip it with a string. I don't know. Maybe it was just for my disc. 
Anyway, it would go through there, but no, that's where you run the hoses through there. I'm glad I saw that so I can get them through right away. That keeps them all up off the ground. I guess there is enough room that you could just sli slide them in and out. I was thinking that those were tight, but hoses will go through here, hook up there, come up to the tractor. Well, that's it for the disc for today. I can understand how this thing pulls that. I don't know if this, I need to look, I don't know how it works. I can see how that would pull up the, the wheels because this will spin this, but it's going to pick up, I suppose it picks this up and the wheels go down. I don't understand how you control the disc itself or if this kind of disc is all set up before you use it, you do all of your, you know, adjustments before you go into the field. I guess maybe I'll bring this in and read it. But this says, John Deere wheel carrier attachment for these discs right here, eight, nine, and 10 foot. It doesn't mean it's gonna tell me how to actually do the disc. Just went out and collected the eggs. This is actually three days worth of eggs, so we're only getting three a day. That's why we have seven more chickens coming. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to go up to L&M and see if they have this hose. Uh, that stuff doesn't dry very fast. <laughs> needs it really bad. It's so rough. I'm going to see if they have the hydraulic line and then at 940 the doctor will call me for my well it's almost six weeks. I mean yesterday was five weeks so but today is my appointment when they call and see how I'm doing. Talk about my restrictions. Well, they did have an eight foot, they had a whole bunch of the eight foot ones, so I bought one of those, the hose, and I bought a clevis. And now it's, what time is it? 18 minutes after nine, I might as well go park in the back of this parking lot and wait for my doctor appointment thing to call because I get way better reception here than I do at the house. I had my phone appointment and I uh, talked to I don't know, only maybe five minutes but Tuesday she said then my restrictions come off today is today is uh, today is Wednesday so next Tuesday they come off but still she said stay limited like be careful do it I, before it was 20 pounds and she said just kind of keep it under 30 and just see how everything feels 
Look at all the flies on top of my hood. The bugs are just coming out with this warmer weather. Won't be long and it'll be mosquitoes. That's the second time I've replaced that filter. And I tell you, this uh, gasket down here just sucks. They would have just made this a little bit higher so it would fit down in there. I wonder if it's just me or if everybody has that trouble. Last time I did it, I had a small, you know, just a tiny leak, you know. I think it's gonna do the same thing. I mean, I'm down as tight as it'll go. I don't know. I was looking at these, people talk about them in my uh, farm all whatever Facebook page and these are, people make these out of wood, they turn them on a lathe and it's really cool. I barely sell them. Run this thing. I should start up the tractor and see how that works. Get this out of the way. Oh, well, looks like I don't have that thing on, right? I was looking at, I have to push in the clutch to be able to run my wheel, so. And I look down at it and I'm pouring oil out the back, so I don't have that thing on. I don't understand what I'm doing wrong with that. It's gotta be me. Huh, I'll let that drain back down in there for a minute and then try it again. Check out the work camper and see how it handled winter time. Looks pretty good. Zero mouse sign in here at all. Melissa was just messaging with the lady that wants to buy it yesterday and I got in trouble for not. She messaged me right before, just like right before surgery. And I didn't message back because it was right before surgery. I had stuff on my mind and uh, and then we had surgery and I, there's no way I could crank that thing up and down for the front because that's really hard to do when you go up. And uh, so now if she wants to come and get it, I would say another week the yard should be dry enough to get back here. Yeah, everything looks really good.
Time to get her out of the yard. I don't see any mouse sign, but it almost looks like sawdust. I might, I, you know what that might have been? I come in here and got some plates out of here, those plastic plates. I'm not sure. A few dead flies on the floor, but it looks like the, uh, fire thing is needing a battery. Well, everything looked good in the fifth wheel also. My battery went dead, so everything looked good. Just a few dead bugs that, to pick up. With this thing here, I let it drain down. Tried to get that to go back in again. Could not get it. So I went on to my Farm All Restorations or whatever uh, Facebook page, and I, I wrote in there, I said, is everybody as mentally challenged as I am every single time I try to do this? I said I have a heck of a time trying to get it tight and not leak and, and that was in so many words and and I had waited for this to drain down and then checked it and there was a whole bunch of answers and they said is there an old gasket in there and I had just taken the gasket out so I'm looking at it and I'm thinking there's no freaking gasket down in there and I pushed on it with a piece of wood when I was trying to clean it out and stuff I went into the workshop and I got a little screwdriver and I poke in there sure enough there was a gasket in there <laughs> the whole time I've had the tractor there's been a gasket down in there because when I removed uh, changed it out the first time I took the old gasket out put the new gasket in couldn't get it to seal right so so yeah once again that that place saved me I should be able to fire this up now and everybody else is like I never had a problem it's like I can't just be me <laughs> Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching. I think I'll end this one right now, and the next one we'll finally be able to get back to doing some normal stuff again. I will see you guys on the next video.